Hey everybody, this is extra tutorial number 4. In this video, I will discuss about different ways of importing modules and ways of importing your own written functions from a different Python file. I will also discuss about the different indentation schemes in Python and how to avoid indentation errors which is very important. To look into the ways you can import a particular module or the function, let us consider the math module. Consider that we wish to use the method seal in this module. Seal gives the least integer greater than a given number. Say seal of 1.2 is 2 and seal of 4.7 is 5. The simplest way that you all know we can go about this is import math math dot seal. This way we import the complete math module in our program and then use the function in the module. Suppose you have a class also named math in our program. Then to save yourself from this, you can use import math as say mathematics. And then we will use the seal function. Here also we are importing the entire module by renaming it in our program. We can also import a particular function or value that we require rather than importing the entire module into our program. We can do this by from math import c5. Here we have imported only seal function and pi constant from the math module. We can use this directly. This gives us the seal value. This gives us the value of the constant pi. So here we have imported only the selected modules and use them without mentioning the name of the module. We can also rename these functions while importing them. So we can say from math import seal as c pi as p. Now c of 1.7 gives us 2 and p gives us the value of pi. If you wish to obtain all the methods or values in a particular module but do not wish to use the name of the module while using these you can simply do from math import star asterisk here refers to all the functions and values we are directly importing all the functions and value of the module math into our program and hence here we do not need to use the word math whenever we are calling any function or value if we make our own programs and want to call them in another program, the way of importing is exactly the same. Let's have a look at an example for this. I have made this python file named mymath.py. These are the two trivial functions that I have written in this file. Inc returns the number obtained after adding 1 to the given number and dec returns the number obtained after subtracting 1 from the given number. So now this is my python console that I have initiated in the same location where I have saved mymath.py. For importing my mymath file, I'll say import mymath and to use the functions, I will say mymath.inc say 4.5 mymath.dec4 You can follow all the other ways that I just discussed for importing a self-made python module and using the methods and values inside it. Now let's look at indentation in python and what all ways you can go about it. Also I will look into some common errors that can be avoided which lead to indentation errors. There are different ways that you can use to indent in python but you should make sure that you follow the same indentation scheme throughout your program. Whenever you try to mix two different ways it will lead to indentation errors. Consider we are writing this if statement on the condition 1 equals equals 1 and we wish to print true for this case. I am on the console right now. When I am on the next line, I have to provide indentation. I press a tab. You can see that I have moved a few spaces. When I press a back arrow key, I move back by 4 spaces. And when I press the forward arrow key, it takes me forward by that length. So we can indent by giving one tab whose length is equal to 4 spaces. But these four spaces constitute a single character that means that you can't make that four a three space by giving a backspace. If I give a backspace, it takes me back by four spaces. 
similarly you can even give two three four or any number of tabs but you will have to maintain this indentation scheme throughout your program so say if i'm using two tabs I will say my one indent is equal to two tab spaces. Now let me show you how to be careful about the indentation levels. Suppose we are writing a nested loop. Consider this. Let us take a two tab indent for this loop over i. One, two. Now let's consider the second nested loop over j. Here also, you now have a choice. You can choose any number of type spaces you want for this nested loop. Let's say here I want to use a single tab. So I give a single tab and I let's say print J. But when I am out of the loop on J, I have to follow the indentation that was over loop I. I can't say I want to go back to a single indent. So here as well, I will use a double indent and say print i. This example was just to tell you what all ways it is possible to go about for indenting different levels. But it is always advised to follow one scheme. So say if you are going with one tab space indent for level 1, you should use two tab space indent for level 2. Next, I will come to why so many of you often get confused as to why your code is giving an indentation error. Consider this piece of code. It might be looking absolutely fine to you with no error. Everything seems to be well indented. So now, let me press and enter key. Voila! An error. That's strange, isn't it? This is the most common problem that students encounter. Let me roll back and show to you what I did there. This is a normal loop statement. Now this is a second print statement. Let me check here. You can see that when I press a left arrow key, it takes the cursor back by length equal to 4 spaces. Everything seems to be fine. Now this is the second statement. Let me check here. You can see that when I press left arrow key, it is taking me one byte space at a time and not by a width of a tab space. Hence, this gives me an indentation error as I mixed two types of indentation schemes. When Python is on print i line, it reads an indent as a tab space and regards it in its memory. Then, when it moves to print i plus one line, it is unable to see a tab space, rather, it sees four byte spaces. So, it immediately makes a conclusion that there is an indentation error as this indentation does not match the outer indentation level which was a tab space. You are allowed to use any number of white spaces for a particular indentation level but you have to maintain that scheme throughout that block. Like consider this. Here I have used a single space as an indent and it works but I can't write print i plus 1 in the next line with any indent other than this one byte space. Suppose I now give two space and write print i plus 1 it will give me an indentation error. You must be thinking that why I am telling you this because all this is managed by your text editor. When you press a tab on your keyboard, it can take you forward by a number of tab spaces or a number of white spaces. Indentation scheme is set by default in any text editor which involves two parts. The type of scheme to be used, white spaces or tab spaces. And the second is the length, like for example to use two tab spaces or four white spaces. When you press a tab, you move forward through some combination of these two. For example, here in this editor, when I press a tab, it gives 4 white spaces. Now let me change the width. Now when I press a tab, 
you can see it gave me eight white spaces and this was on a single tab the default scheme varies from one text editor to other you must make sure that you know which scheme your editor uses the issues arise when you move from one text editor to another which uses a different indentation scheme when you edit your code and run it it gives you indentation errors and you are clueless what to do i hope now you won't be clueless anymore and rather very clear about your indentation scheme so that was all about indentation and ways of importing modules in python these topics are very important to keep in mind whenever you are writing a python code to avoid serious issues with your code hope you liked it and now have a clarity on these topics in the next tutorial i will discuss the scope of variables in python that is local or global thanks a lot for watching